also going to go through and tell everybody about um, all the settings you have before we get started. For anybody who needs closed captions, if you look at the bottom of your window screen, um, there should be three circle buttons in the center. And if you go to the right, there should be a square that says CC and it says turn on captions. If you would like to use those, you may. Um, if um, you would like to change the layout of your screen so you can see more than one person, you would then um, go all the way to the bottom right hand corner um, Aaron, you are, <laughs> Aaron, you are sharing your screen just so you, just so you know, um, you can go to the bottom right hand corner, click the three right, three vertical dots, um, and click change layout. There are three or four different options for you when it comes to viewing your screen that way. Um, when it comes to a chat, if you have a question or you'd like to ask something or say something, there is a chat option. If you go to the top of your window, um, you'll see the number of people in, um, on the right, you'll see the number of people in our session. And just to the right of that, there should be a square with three lines in it. That's your chat. Um, Erica Lucci, our president, will be um, watching the, the chat just to make sure nothing goes by without us seeing it. If you have a question, feel free to put it in there. If you'd like to say something, we can call on you if we know from in there that you would like to chat. Um, when it comes to speaking, please mute your mics if you are not speaking. You can go down to the bottom um, of your window and of the three circles that you see there, the one on the left is a microphone, that's your mute button. Please mute yourself when you're not speaking. If you'd like to talk, we will call on you and you can unmute yourself, state your name, and then ask your question. When you're done, mute yourself again. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I had a chat question to mm -hmm. highlight where turn on um, the captioning is, but just okay. a little slower. Okay. If you go to the bottom of your screen and you see three circle buttons at the center, you'll go just to the right of that and there's a square button with um, two with the word CC in it and under it, it says turn on captions. You click that, your caption should show up right below the video. Does that work for everyone? Awesome, glad you found it, Heidi. Great. Um, Deb, if you'd like to share your screen, um, those same three dots in the bottom right corner where I was talking about how you can change your um, your your view, you click those three dots. <clears throat> Sorry, just to the left of that, it actually says present now. You would click present now um, and then choose which window you would like to present your entire screen or just a single window. Great. Awesome. Um, any other questions before we get started? Okay, and we will go ahead. Um, first, I'd like to introduce our uh, seven panelists. First, if we could have um, Kendra Benedict unmute herself and introduce herself, just um, let us know your name and how you service Arizona's deaf and hard of hearing community. Hi, I'm Kendra Benedict. I'm the director of ASDV's Early Learning Program. We provide services to children um, from birth to age five across the state, not only deaf and hard of hearing children, but blind and visually impaired children as well. Thanks, Kendra. Um, next, could we have Deb Flynn? Unmute yourself and let us know a little bit about you. Hi. Hi. We're getting a little bit of feedback, Deb. Okay. There you I'm go. Deb. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yes. I'm Deb Flim and I'm an audiologist at Phoenix Children's Hospital and um, we provide services from birth um, actually even beyond 18 if you're a well-established patient. Um, anywhere from hearing aids, cochlear implants, diagnostic testing, um, and any audiological needs that you have. Thanks, Deb. Um, next, could we have Carla Zimmerman come on and share a little bit about how you service our community? Hi, I'm Carla Zimmerman, and I'm at Desert Fort, or I'm sorry, I'm at Zimmerman Speech and Hearing. Um, we serve children with hearing loss throughout the, the state, actually. We, um, 
there are five of us in the office um, providing therapy, and um, we specialize in working with children who are deaf and hard of hearing. Thanks, Carla. Um, next, could I have um, Shanna or Matt um, come on and share a little bit about Happy Years and what they do? Sure, I can talk for a second. So I'm Shanna Dusniff, I'm an audiologist. Um, we're in the private practice setting, so we're at Happy Ears Hearing Center. And we see newborns through adults with all types of hearing loss, uh, cochlear implant patients as well, more teens and adults with CIs. Um, but everything but vestibular, we don't do that. <laughs> Thanks, Shanna. Um, and lastly, could we have uh, Deanne come in and share a little bit about Desert Voices? Hi, I'm Deanne Chapman, the Executive Director at Desert Voices, and we serve uh, deaf and hard of hearing children ages zero to about um, six years old, and we are a site-based um, education setting. Thanks, Deanne. Um, just so everyone's aware, I also work at Desert Voices, but I am a teacher of the deaf, so I will be giving my perspective as a teacher on how um, Desert Voices services have changed um, during this time. Um, next, um, we're going to start off by asking a couple of questions to our panelists, um, and then we'll move into um, individual questions that people might have. Again, if you have questions, feel free to um, put them in the chat, and Erica will let us know, and we'll call on you one by one that way. Um, our first question for the panelists, and we'll just go down in the same order as we did before, is um, how, how did your services look before COVID-19 and how have they changed since? Um, we'll start with Kendra. Go ahead. Okay, so we serve approximately 620 or so children across the state. That includes both uh, birth to three and preschool, uh, deaf, hard of hearing, and blind and visually impaired. Um, so those services prior to COVID-19 um, involved in-home services for birth to three um, in the Northern region, Central and Southern. Um, uh, and then uh, our preschool programs, we have an on-site preschool at PDSD, an on-site preschool in, at Simonton Elementary in the Santan Valley, and, um, and our program on the ASDB campus in Tucson. And then our blind and visually impaired children, preschool children attend FBC here in Phoenix. Um, so they just look like typical settings. It was a typical early intervention program for birth to three. Um, however, we did have a very small pilot in tele-intervention that had been going on for a few years that Barb Schrag had um, set up, the former director. And we were very fortunate to have had that because that really made the transition into this new reality that we're living. Um, and it's seamless. Um, it was, it, we really were very, very lucky that we were set up for, for success from the beginning um, and having not only some folks that had that knowledge, but equipment that our teachers had. Um, it was a fairly seamless transition. Our, our staff that are, um, that had been involved in that pilot and new staff that had been specifically trained in tele-intervention from their programs they came from, um, they jumped right in and trained staff who, who did not have experience in that. Uh, it was just phenomenal to sit back and watch. For preschool, it was a little bit more challenging, of course. Um, it was all new to them. They're used to working with kids. The parents drop them off at the beginning of the day, pick them up at the end, and um, now they're online working with children and parents at the same time. So it's a little bit of a learning curve for them, but they're doing awesome as well. So that's the overview of what it looks like. Great. Thanks, Kendra. Um, next, could we have um, Deb share a little bit about the services that Phoenix Children's Hospital has offered and now offers with COVID? All right. Um, so our services actually have not changed too much. Uh, we are still seeing patients uh, on a daily basis, um, and that's new patients to established patients. Um, we are doing a lot of cleaning. Um, so although we cleaned before, we're being um, extra careful 
we ask that all families come in um, wear masks and we do give them those when they come in up to the front door and um, every clinician uh, audiologist wears a mask as well. Um, so we're providing hearing aid services, cochlear implant services, and diagnostic testing. Um, a lot of the hospitals are not doing um, the follow-up newborn hearing screening program. Um, so we are seeing a lot of um, little babies for their uh, diagnostic testing. We are also um, working on uh, through teletherapy. So if there are families that do, don't feel comfortable coming in, and um, they need a service that um, we could do through teletherapy, we can do that. Um, so overall, I don't feel like any, not to us, not much has changed. Awesome, that's great. Um, next, could we have Carla share a little bit about services at Zimmerman? Sure. So um, prior to the virus, we um, primarily saw families in the office. Uh, we did have some kids that we saw through distance therapy. Some of those are kids who live um, in distant spots in the state. Um, some of those were kids who uh, were um, fragile medically and couldn't come into the office. And some of them were families that just preferred that setting. So um, while most of our families did come into the office, we had some experience with distance therapy. All of our therapists had had some practice with that and some experience. Um, the way that we work in our office is to provide um, parent-based or family-based um, therapy where the parents are really taught to um, be the primary language teacher for their child. Um, and so because that's always been our focus, that made this transition a little bit easier because it's not all about the Carla show or the Jody show or the Cheryl show. It's about um, the parents being able to implement um, the plans at home and to be able to make them go smoothly. So that was fortunate for us. Um, now we're 100% online and we're lucky to have the knowledge that we had prior and the practice that we had prior because it's been it's been really daunting <laughs> to move everybody online um, the most challenging thing that we've run into is having parents run the whole session and by that i mean that they've got to control the toys they've got to control the whole setup they've got to control the child's behavior and children behave very differently at home than they do out <laughs> and so I give them full credit because they're they're dealing with kind of a, a, a difficult situation. I'm on the other hand sitting here and just saying, oh, try this and maybe this would work. Um, but while that's the most challenging thing, I think it's also the best thing about what's happened because where we've kind of smoothed out how everything went, I think it's hard to make that go at home. Um, and so parents may not have been able to replicate what was happening in the office at home. And I think now I've had some really good feedback from some parents saying that um, they really feel like they've got this under control. It doesn't mean everything goes great in every session, um, far from it, but they feel like they know how to handle the situation. And that is a big, that's a big plus for us. Thanks, Carla. Um, next, could we have Shanna share a little bit about Happy Ears, and Matt, you can join in as well. Okay, I can uh, go ahead and jump in for Shanna if that's okay. So, um, before um, you know, everything was kind of business as usual. Just like it, um, Deb mentioned, we were seeing all of our usual uh, patients, um, all the different appointments from pediatrics, hearing aids, and uh, cochlear implants. And uh, same goes for newborn screening as well, newborn testing. Um, when everything started to take place, uh, we did start to see things dwindle or slow down a little bit. So we started readjusting uh, to try to do a little bit more of tele telehealth, teletherapy. Um, and that was a little bit of an, a, a slight adjustment at first, just kind of figuring out the glitches and things like that, because you know, I think personally, I think audiology services are best rendered in person. Um, there's a lot of things that we have to do as far as testing. So we did limit some of our testing and um, individual contact 
Um, so um, once things started getting a little bit more uh, heightened in the Valley and in Arizona, uh, we did start limiting to curbside uh, services uh, where we would have the people pull up, they would call that they were outside and then we would go out there and um, you know pick up their devices, whatever it was, with, if it was a repair. Um, occasionally, you know, as we all know, uh, some people with hearing and hearing losses, um, they just, they, it's an emergency if they can't hear. Um, you know, me personally, having the hearing loss, if my implant were to go out, it would be an emergency. So um, some of those cases, uh, we were able to help people as needed um, to try to fix those problems for them. Um, so anyways, um, now, you know, we're, we're starting to see things. Um, seems like we're going to be picking things back up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think we're going to see more of this teleaudiology still be implemented, um, but definitely you're able to see some of the flaws in it. So, you know, the, as kind of as mentioned for therapies, you know, and having the patients are, have a better time explaining their problems in person in the office, it's a lot easier to fix those problems in, per, in person. So um, we're hoping to get back to that um, relatively soon, but we're going to be um, starting to see more patients and uh, starting to see more patients and we're going to be um, doing a whole lot of sanitizing in between everybody. Is everybody able to hear me okay? I was just going to add to you that we were looking for masks. Um, I, we found a few masks that have the, the face or the mouth part that's clear so that people can still see us when we're trying to talk to them and same thing. I mean, if pediatric patients are coming in there, we're going to be limiting how many people can come with them just because sometimes it's hard because I know and we understand that, you know, when I was a single mom, I didn't have anyone to help me with my kids. And so they went everywhere with me. But when the situation is what it is right now, it's just, you know, trying to have as little, as the least amount of people coming in the office all at the same time as possible. And Kids are, and little families are cute and fun, but there are a lot of germ carriers too. And so, and we don't want that spreading around our office if we don't need to have that happen. So just a lot of gloves and masks and sanitizing everything between patients, like Matt said. Thanks, you guys. Um, there is, there's, there does seem to be a little bit of trouble with captions right now. Um, if you haven't tried um, closing out of the meeting and then coming back in, that might be a way to help. There's, you can also try turning the captions off and then back on and seeing if that helps as well. Um, next, could we have Deanne um, speak a little bit about um, Desert Voices and their services? Sure. Um, so uh, before all of this, we were uh, an on-site, all of our service works were on site. We were providing um, a one hour parent coaching sessions to our youngest. We were providing a jump start class uh, one hour or two hours once a week. We were providing toddler class uh, to two year olds and up. And then we had full time preschool uh, ages three to about six, Monday through Friday, 830 to three. Um, one thing that we had on our side is when all of this happened, we happened to be on spring break. So our leadership team was able to get together and start making plans for everything to go online. And then when our staff was back, we were able to start um, some quick training and get everybody ready to start uh, providing services online. So. The parent coaching sessions uh, were uh, pretty easily moved over to online. Uh, toddler class, amazingly enough, our toddler teacher is holding group sessions with two-year-olds, uh, <clears throat> two which I haven't gotten to see yet, but I want to see that in action. And <clears throat> then our preschool teachers are, are all also providing individual services and group services. So, so our 50 plus families are receiving somewhere between an hour to 12 hours of service a week. 
and we will continue that through the end of our school year, which is the middle of June this year. Thanks, Deanne. Um, and then, like I said, I'm also a teacher at Desert Voices, so I'm going to speak a little bit to how um, more the teaching side of things have changed, more um, a little bit more detail. Um, before COVID, um, teachers were working for the most part all day. Um, I, unless you're part of toddler room, they had classes from um, in the mornings. Um, teacher, we have teachers of the deaf and speech language pathologists, as well as a couple of um, general education teachers that provide speech, language, auditory, vocabulary, and academic services to all of our students um, throughout the day in groups of one to three small, one to three kids in small groups and um, large groups up to 15, 16 kids at a time. Um, and that was daily occurrence Monday through Friday for most students, um, particularly in preschool. Um, and then since COVID-19, as Deanne said, we've sort of shifted quite a bit, or if not everything, over to um, online services. Um, we're required to provide um, at least 12 hours a week in some form of services to our students, whether that's online classwork that families can do by themselves, whether it's uh, direct instruction in small groups, one-on-one -on -one parent coaching, um, or small group sessions with kids. Um, we have a myriad of things, and as we go from student to student, teacher to teacher, those services change depending on what everyone can handle. Um, as of right now, most teachers are choosing to work from home. There are some who need to work from school and they stay in their rooms and just like they are doing in most other places, they're working very hard to keep everything clean, um, but they're still only um, doing um, online services even when they're working from school. Um, I myself am only going in once every couple of weeks to get um, materials here or there. So there's um, not many people are physically in school at all, really. Um, and that's pretty much what we have going on with our services as well. Um, now, this whole experience, um, a lot of people can get bogged down in how negative they feel and how not fun it is to stay at home and be stuck at home and not get to see anyone. Even if, and even if we do, it's just on a screen like this. So our second question before we really open it up to the attendees here is for all the, for all the panelists, um, what um, one resource or piece of advice, piece of advice or encouragement would you like to share with the people and the, the, the families that we service, the kids that we service, um, just so they don't quite feel as overwhelmed and bogged down as they might feel. Um, and we'll start again with Kendra. Is it popping up? There, okay. Um, I have two pieces of advice if I can, if I may. Um, one, this is to families, to providers, um, to, to everyone. There are so many resources out there available. You know, it's during times like this where you just see people coming forward and helping people. And we are only as successful as we are right now because of, of our partners, because of our partnership with Desert Voices, with Zimmerman, with FBC. Um, and lately, most importantly, with the Ear Foundation and a grant that they had recently received from um, HRSA, the HRSA grant, which is providing close to 100 of our families across the state with tablets and internet access. Um, since we do serve families as far north as Colorado City and down to Nogales and even on the reservations, we have been so fortunate that that grant just happened to become available April 1st. And we've been able to provide um, uh, that technology to so many of our families that did not have it. Um, so that's one thing, just resources and be willing to look and be willing to accept. And then the second thing in regard to the education of deaf and hard of hearing children, whether they're infants, toddlers, school age, one of the first things I thought of the very first week this all started was, you know, I heard a lot of educators, a lot of leaders in education being really nervous about what to do, what to do. And I thought, let's just get out of the way and let teachers do their thing because as special educators and as teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing, we're trained to do this. We have years of school and experience behind us that have taught us to walk into any educational environment, assess it and modify it so that it's accessible. This is no different. It's just a different educational environment. And we have to step back, look at it, figure out how to get our kids access, and we can do it. 
Um, I think when all is said and done at the end of this, we are going to have found ways to educate kids that we wouldn't have found before. I think education will be better. I really do after all this is over. Amen. Um, how about who's next on our list? Deb. You there, Deb? Uh, you might be muted. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. how about now? Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, I want to echo exactly what Kendra said. She couldn't have um, presented that any more beautifully. I agree. I feel like um, the resources available and out there are tremendous, and um, I think it's just a matter of um, using our skills to find what works best for each of the children, and um, the resources and the community in Arizona coming together, I think, has been wonderful. And, you know, having sources like this and working with Desert Voices and Zimmerman and uh, Early Intervention Program, um, all of those services, uh, we're all in this together and we're all in it to help families. So, um, and then the second piece of advice I think I'd like to give is, is uh, for parents to remember that um, connecting uh, to computers and to teachers, uh, it's important if they have the accessories such as router system um, or um, the streamer devices that that could really, really assist uh, the students in hearing better um, and participating better in their uh, academic setting. So if they have, if you know, any parents have any questions about how to connect, um, I have lots of suggestions and options. I've got some um, resources, some handouts that I can give. Um, I have most of the connective devices sitting right next to me. So if anyone has any questions on how to connect to the computer, um, I'd be more than happy to share those. Thank you so much, Deb. Um, next, um, Carla, any um, pieces of advice, resources you'd like to share with everyone right now? Well, kind of piggybacking on um, what Deb just said about um, enabling your child to access the information on a screen, on a tablet, um, on, electro uh, on electronic sources. And that's really, really challenging for kids with hearing loss. It's a, cha it's a challenge for me personally sometimes to hear what's going on and um, I don't have a hearing loss. Um, so on our Facebook site, I posted um, a short webinar. It's like maybe four minutes long from the Office of Civil Rights. And if you have a situation where you feel like your school is not um, being proactive or not accommodating your child with their needs, I'd really recommend that you look at that and find out what they're supposed to be doing. In all fairness, everybody's doing their best right now. Nobody's trying to do a, a crummy job. But um, if you don't know what you're supposed to do, you don't always do it. And for you as parents, if you don't know what you're entitled to, you don't always ask for it. And so I would strongly recommend that you, um, that you know what should be happening for your child at this time. And this is specifically created for children in this in this spot. Um, the second piece of advice, I'm gonna copy everybody else I had to, I'm so glad I'm not the only one, is just to do your best and be gentle with yourself. You know, this is a hard time. We have our staff meeting once a week and we are all struggling. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there. There are a lot of resources, but sometimes it's almost like an overload. And um, I just want you to be gentle with yourselves and with your kids. Find time to spend with your kids and, and use that time to read. Um, take turns reading to one another. Read them your favorite novel. Build a blanket fort. Um, create something with Legos. Do a cooking craft. Um, watch TV together. Do things to help your kid get through this. Because honestly, academically, your kid is going to be fine. But emotionally, with all this upheaval, this is a hard time for kids, and it's a hard time for us. So um, just kind of be gentle with yourselves and, and, and do what you can for them. Thank you, Carla. 
Um, next, uh, let's have Shanna. What pieces of advice or resources would you like to share with everyone? Um, well, I've Deb said a lot, and we're audiology as well. So just pretty much echoing everything that everyone else mentioned. But um, one thing that I've noticed, and in, in since my son was diagnosed with hearing loss like years ago, was just how fortunate I think all of our families are to be in Arizona for services because. I know when my son was younger, we moved around for school and different things, and it kind of blew my mind, like how much I had here when I moved away and what wasn't available to me in other states. And it's something that I think all of the early interventionists, and I mean, I'm so impressed when we have our little babies come in and we, we send the notice out to the state, you know, just letting them know what the results of the testing were and they come back with someone with them that's an advocate to the appointments. And so, you know, lean on those people during this time, even if it's from home, even if it's through telehealth. I mean, there's so many parents out there and people in the same boat. And just, again, like Carla said, you're not alone and, and do the best you can. I mean, everybody's just trying to figure this out as it kind of plays out. And so, um, but I am really impressed with, and maybe parents now are just a little bit more, maybe it's the intervention now too, but I mean, I'm like, man, when my son was diagnosed, I, I was struggling. And I just, we, we see these, these parents come in and they're like, okay, I've got this and they've got their advocate. And so even though they can't, you know, come in all the time right now because of what's going on, I know that all of the early interventionists and pretty much everybody is so willing to communicate with families. And so just make sure you lean on the people that are you know, there to help you. They're not gonna blow you off and ignore you if you have a crisis or emergency. I'm sure everybody still answers their emails right now like we do, so. Um, but you know, hang in there. We're all gonna get through it and it'll go back to normal, but we have an awesome support system in Arizona pretty much across the board to help families with hearing loss, so. Thanks, Shanna. Matt, do you have anything you'd like to add? Or what are what are your resources and, yeah. and well, positives I mean, to add? Let's put it that way. <laughs> my my biggest thing that I'll add is, you know, just to remind everybody, um, kind of piggybacking off of everybody else, but <clears throat> how fortunate we are to have the technology that we can implement these strategies. I mean, before even 20 years ago, we would all be sitting ducks. So the fact that we even have the ability to reach out to someone and ask for resources or to provide resources is, is such a big deal. So, you know, I think this is a, um, you know, this is not a good circumstance, but at the same time, it reminds us of how far we've come in being able to provide these services or continue these services. Um, and so, and same for the parents being able to have access to that stuff. You know, sometimes the parent might just want to be able to ask a provider a question and or you know maybe they can get an example of how i should do x y and z so i think that you know as far as you know i, I wouldn't say that um, these teletherapies are perfect um we have a long ways to go into making them more effective but it was an opportunity for us to learn from it and we i think even as uh, developers looking into things for the future for accessibility, this gives them more information and practice. So, you know, I think we, we can all kind of look at ourselves as test dummies for, you know, improvement for how we can um, modify our service delivery and, and especially for certain uh, areas in the state that don't have such easy access. You know, some people have to drive two or three hours to get a service. So I, I do, you know, just going up from my own perspective, um, you know, I had to drive about two and a half hours just to get anything. So, um, be, you know, this kind of ability would really just save a lot of families um, grief. <laughs> so, um, you know, that I, I think I, I do uh, applaud everybody for the willingness to um, tra transition so quickly. And, um, you know, unfortunately, um, everybody's been very, um, you know, merciful <laughs> in this process. So um, just uh, hang in there, just as everybody else said, and just uh, we'll, we'll get through it eventually. Thank you. Um, Deanne, do you have anything um, to add? Um, I 
I'm sure I'll probably just reiterate a lot of what has been said, but um, I would say to uh, families, parents, caregivers, give yourself some grace. Um, every week may look different. We're learning that most of our families have multiple children at home that they're trying to educate. It's not just the student that we're working with. They're competing for technology. They're competing for time. Some families um, have two people working from home. Some are out. And so it's just, it's a, a lot going on. Um, and we're in it. We're all in this together. Um, our team at Desert Voices has been amazing with just being very flexible and meeting families where they are. So one week may not look like the next. It's, um, you know, what can you handle this week? We'll be there and we'll get through it together. So, and we're not, we're not there to, or expect families to turn into teachers of the deaf or SLPs during this time. Um, we're there to provide guidance, to support, to brainstorm, and most importantly, to celebrate successes during this really unpredictable time, because those are all still happening. Um, we have to find the silver lining every day. Um, so there will be good days, there will be some bad days, but most importantly, also remember as parents, um, you are the best and safest teacher for your child. Thank you. Um, I would love to piggyback off of what everybody has said, but also take it a step further. I think my um, big takeaway that I wanna make sure everyone remembers is not only um, should you give yourself grace, but whatever you are doing already is more than enough. Um, just like Deanne said, you are your child's teacher now and even when we aren't stuck in the situation we're in. And whatever you are doing is better than nothing. Um, so keep that in mind. Just stay aware of what's going on and any information that you have is helpful information. You don't have to work extra hard to get it. Just just be present. Um, so. Keep that in mind. That's a that's I think I think the big overall take home. Everybody wants to make sure everyone's aware of. Um, so now that we are through asking our main questions, if anybody has questions that they themselves would like to ask our panelists, whether that's um, specific to devices or services, whatever you might have, please uh, put those questions down in chat, and we will call on you to unmute yourselves and go ahead and ask. So this is Erica Lucci. I am um, the volunteer president for AG Bell Arizona. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that um, Michelle Mike highlighted in the chat that um, there are great services through ACDHH um, and has a couple links in there if you guys scroll up a little bit. Um, and Michelle, if you feel like um, sharing those, uh, you're certainly welcome to. Thank you for adding those to the chat. And thank you for offering to do the closed captioning services. We will definitely take advantage of uh, person captioning in the in the future. Any questions? So no questions in the chat yet, but okay. I, oh, oh looks, looks like, like we, have we got one. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, let's start with um, Justin and Colleen kneeling. Um, they have two questions. Would you, if you guys would like to come on and ask them yourself, go ahead and unmute yourself. Otherwise we'll ask them for you. <laughs> uh, first, we have a preschooler and We'd like to be able to hook up the Roger pen directly to the computer. I've been setting it beside, but I feel like she'd hear better if it was directly connected, but I also still need to be able to hear the intervention. So is there a way to do that? Yes, great question. Do we have any? Um it's like Shanna's unmuting herself. There we go. Yeah, I can answer that one. So um, 
The Roger Pen has obviously the little audio cord that you can plug into the computer, but it does mute what everyone else is trying to hear. So another option would be to stream it through some speakers, and you could just put the Roger Pen maybe close to the speaker, so that way it's going directly to your child's the hearing aids, and then you can still hear what's going on. But unfortunately, unless you have some kind of an audio splitter, or if you have the newer select that connects through Bluetooth, that might be a little different, but then you might still have the issue with the signal being split. So I don't know, I, I would probably just put it in front of the speaker since the Roger Pen has that capability where you could just lay it on a table and aim it at where the sound source is, and then you can still be part of that. I was gonna say, I have a Roger Pen here um, that has the USB connector. And I'm going to try to split my screen because I found a connector um, on the internet that you can purchase if you want to split it and connect it into your, so that you can wear headphones and your child can use the Roger system. Although putting it in front of the speaker certainly is a lot easier. So hang on just a second. Let me see if I can split my screen here. If, if you still have your video up on um, your other device, it might be easier to share that one. Um, Do you have that one up still? Yeah. Don't. Can yes. Uh, I don't see your video yet, Deb. Okay, hang on. There we so, go. Okay. So this is um, a splitter where you can put the USB on one side and then a headphone jack on the other side. And it's about, like it looks about $25. Um, and then I also included in the top picture, if you have um, the Roger Select, you still have to plug into the computer. Um, so it'll Bluetooth to a phone, but it won't Bluetooth to the computer. So uh, you can use the top jack and plug the select into the first jack and then your headphones into the second jack. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Could you also, Deb, copy that link into the chat for people? Sure. Thank you. Um, do we have, uh, let's see what other questions we have. Um, Liliana, you had a question for Deb as well. Um, would you like to come on and ask that? Yeah, hi. Um, so my question was kind of similar. Um, so how would it work if I connect the Roger pen to the phone? Because um, I know it works if you're on a call. Does it work? But I don't think it works if like you're watching a video or something. So will it work for an audio call? Um, for them to to get the the sound to their hearing aids. Uh, if it's paired to your phone, then yes. Um, but if you're paired to a computer, a tablet, or an iPad, then you actually have to um, hard wire it into the device. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We had a couple questions about um, apps that could help the kids. Um, there was um, a parent who emphasized their child's not getting any speech right now, um, any speech therapy, because uh, that is provided by the school district. Does anybody have any suggestions on apps? Are we talking speech specific apps? Is that what you remember reading? That was one of the questions. Um, okay, so about speech, <clears throat> speech apps. There are speech apps out there, but the the thing to remember about an app is that there's no, if it was as simple as like an app that you could just pop your kids in front of and they'd learn good speech, we'd all be doing it. So the tricky thing is that the apps can provide you with stimulus pictures. Um, sometimes it can provide you with a, uh, increasing like a hierarchy of difficulty but in terms of making the corrections in the speech that's a tricky thing 
And um, unfortunately, there's not anything out there that I know of that is a great fit for that type of a situation. Um, I know there are some resources uh, through the cochlear implant programs that you can actually access even if you have hearing aids. So um, Cochlear America has their um, uh, community foundation program and um, Advanced Bionics has, um, trying to remember what their, their, what they call their device or their program, but um, both of them have access to those and I can put a link in the chat for those. There are um, Tina Childress, I don't know if you're familiar with her name, um, she's a, an audiologist with hearing loss herself, has um, compiled a really extensive list of all kinds of stuff. And so she has app recommendations on there. Um, it would be worth looking into. Um, again, her name is Tina Childress. Awesome. There was, I saw in the chat along the same lines of apps for speech, um, this is going out to any teachers of the deaf out there. There was also a question about any good apps that help build language specifically. Um, so not necessarily articulation sounds, but um, grammar structures, sentences, things like that. Any, would anybody like to join in? And if so, please um, state your name and you unmute yourself. Um, Heidi has suggested um, Hear Builder. Um, is that an application, a website, Heidi? So has Diana. She says um, they're offering a free trial during this time for any auditory skills. Um, you can set different levels and customize their learning. And she has posted the web address in the chat as well. Um, Sorry, my, I couldn't get my, couldn't type it fast enough. That's fine. Go ahead. No, actually, Diana is my daughter's TOD. So it, it's actually a really good, I don't know if it's an app itself, but it's a website. And um, it makes her focus and listen to, she has to concentrate on what she's listening to in order to get what what she needs from those things. I mean, she's a little bit older. She's not in the zero to five range, but um, I think I, I found it to be great because it, when she's not hearing it right, she does have to go back and listen to if she wants to get the answers right. So it's, it, I'm not sure. What, I'm sure there's probably different ways of doing the age ranges and whatnot, but Diana set us up with that and it's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Um, we. It also looks like we had a question from Aaron for the audiologists about getting a DM system during this time. Um, Aaron, would you like to come on and ask that verbally? Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I, yes. I know you and I, we spoke about that at our during our meeting, um, but I am just overwhelmed with that. I'm not sure because we switched audiologists and um, she's not, not a pediatric audiologist, but she bends over backwards to basically help us. She's an amazing person. Um, I just don't know, I'm not sure where to start if my insurance, I don't know. I feel, I'm, I'm concerned because we have insurance through uh, the state because Obviously, she has hearing loss and it's considered a disability or a, um, a also a pre existing condition. Um, so, does anybody have any advice as to what, what the first steps would be? Or I guess I'm just kind of overwhelmed with that piece. I feel like we're behind because we don't have one for her yet, um, a Roger or a DM system. Deb or Matt or Shanna, do you have any ideas? 
for Aaron about getting a DM system right now. I don't know if someone is mute. If someone's trying to talk, you can unmute yourself and then and then start talking. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. This yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, okay. We submit authorization through the uh, state insurance, and um, oftentimes, depending on what plan you have, they will actually cover it. Um, there are certain codes that the audiologist that you work with would need to uh, present. Uh, and as long as you get an authorization number, then it, they should cover it. It's not all planned, so it kind of depends on which plan you have. Awesome. Thank you. Um, are there, I believe, I found all of the questions, or I've, I've seen many questions in the chat. Have there been any others that haven't been answered? If so, can you copy paste them back in the bottom? You guys have been so talkative, which is great. It's just hard to read through everything. Um, Shanna asked if the Ear Foundation will help with what you were talking about, Deb. I would, this is Kendra, I would certainly suggest reaching out to them. The worst they can say is no, they are so helpful. Lila's Olson is the contact there. Um, so I would definitely recommend reaching out, you never know. She can go on the website um, for the Ear Foundation of Arizona's website and fill out the Ear for Kids application, and Lilas will get it. And that way, she can help them with the system. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Um, any last questions before we um, start winding down? Well, Shan, I don't know if Shanna was able to make it back, um, but oh, I was going to highlight that you had asked in the chat earlier, um, how are families doing? I don't know if anybody wants to share any experiences or, or reflect with the group. Um, this is, this, oh, go ahead. Okay, this is Kendra. Um, I can just share what we've learned from our families along the way. Um, we were really fortunate in the beginning. We seemed to reach out to, and be able to connect with the vast majority of our families. The most difficulty, of course, we have a lot of families we serve on the Navajo Nation, and that's been the most difficult to um, just kind of swallow. It's been really hard, but um, everyone else made really good contact. People seemed on board and were excited. And now that we're a month or so into it, we're seeing a little bit of fatigue and not as much participation as we were. And so we're trying to you know, really think about what, why that is, what could we be doing differently? There was an article that our leadership shared with us this week um, that that's not uncommon right now, that a lot of families now that, again, we're, we're a month and a half, I think it is into this and they're just tired, you know? Um, depending on how many kids they have in the home and if they're working or not. And um, I mean, I know for myself, I'm literally on video conference from sunup to sundown and I've got my own kids in the other room trying to do online school. And I feel like, okay, wait, I need to be helping them, but I've got to be facilitating this. And so I think everyone, your, your teachers, your audiologists, you know, just family, just, I want the families to know that we're all in this, we're experiencing the same thing. And, and uh, so like everyone has said, just grace and, and uh, giving yourself a break and taking breaks and just spending that time with your family. When else have we ever had a chance to do this? And when will we again? We have to spend time with the people we love the most. And that's kind of awesome. 
Thanks, Kendra. Um, it looks like Carrie Ferris has something she'd like to say. Carrie, go ahead and unmute yourself and you can you can share. Carrie, if you are um, speaking, you'll need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you right now. Ah, okay. Um, did you try and click mute more than once, Carrie? I heard something just then, if that was you playing with the mute. Try yep. pound six. Say that again? Oh, pound six. Um, while Carrie is trying, is working on unmuting herself, Erin, why don't you go ahead and share a little bit too, if you'd like. Erin still will. Okay, we have had an amazing experience actually. I am a teacher and I'm trying to navigate and toggle, I guess, two different curriculums, but Stephanie has made it extremely easy and I actually love <laughs> getting to hang out with her a couple times a week and my daughter Kendall does as well. We have had a lot of chat time, even non-academic with her friends doing Zoom. <laughs> we set up some meetings. Um, so I think that Kendall was very sad when she learned she wasn't going back to school. So we try to make that a non-sad situation so she could still see her friends and of course talk to Miss Stephanie. Um, but Desert Voices has made it a seamless transition for our family. And I, I feel blessed because I am a teacher and I had a little bit of um, experience with Google Classroom and everything, but it has been, it's been pretty great. Nothing, nothing like having the real thing, but they've made it just so easy for us to be part of the family still. So we, we really are having a great time with it. That's Thanks, all. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. Um, is, uh, is there anyone else, any other families who would like to share their experiences um, before we um, start wrapping up? Heidi, it looks like Heidi would like to share something. Can you hear me? Yes. Go okay, ahead. Perfect. Thank you. So I just wanted to share as a parent, um, you know, going right into when they, you know, when Governor Ducey made the announcement that we weren't going back to school, a lot of the, a lot of the school districts were on spring break. So they had a little bit of a chance. Most people had a little bit of a chance to kind of settle into the idea of being home. And my kids go to private school. So we had literally two days and then the day that they were supposed to really be back in school. Their teachers were up and running and there was homework like it, you know, it was schoolwork like it never stopped. And those first couple of weeks, I will say, was very overwhelming and, you know, it was very stressful. And then also trying to work from home and juggling it all and finding the balance, it, there, there was no balance. And then, um, you know, and then we connected with her TOD and was able to get a lot of materials from her and some access for things. So, and I'm still struggling with it. I'm still trying to find that balance. I don't know. I don't, and honestly, I don't want this to be the new normal. So I'm not trying to find a normal. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through day by day. And I think that's what a lot of us as parents are doing. We just, you know, take it as it comes and we do the best that we can. And that's something even as, um, you know, as a professional with, I take care of myself my children, and then I'm trying to make sure I'm taking care of all the families that we help. Um, I'm also with Arizona Hands and Voices, so we're, we're providing some of that support to families and connecting them to resources and making sure that they know about things like this tonight. And, you know, it takes a very delicate balance, and I haven't found that balance yet, but I, you know, we all do the best that we can, but I just want to say um, to all of you, you know, we hear from families about just about all of you actually i would say all of you we do hear from families from about each and every one of you and you guys are all amazing out in this field we're all doing things and we're you know 
providing resources and and being there for the families in this really really tough time that we're facing and you know as a hard of hearing person myself um matt couldn't have said it any better uh, i just said it this morning in another meeting that i was in that not that i'm grateful for covid 19 in any way but i'm very grateful that it happened in this day and age that we have the technology to stay connected to you know at least have those opportunities for parents to take advantage of um, resources and and connection and to still have that social piece there because you know i i know i had moments in my life where i was very isolated and you know couldn't reach out you know my parents were not engaging things like that so for so all of us in the communities that we serve and the families that we serve and the professionals that are working together i couldn't be more grateful as a parent and as a professional so i appreciate all of you Thank you, Heidi. Does anyone else have something they'd like to share before we um, wrap up? I have one thing to share. Sorry. Go ahead, Shanna. Brianne is in this chat box. I saw that she was in here too, and she, this is separate from the parent thing, but um, for the FM systems and the devices that people aren't able to access at home or their insurance doesn't cover it, um, I know that your foundation, my mute button was kind of messed up, but we've had, Lilas is amazing with the ear foundation and Brianne, she also mentioned the public schools. A lot of them, if your kids go to a public school, they should be providing those. And a lot of the schools right now, because things have been um, pushed to the home, like, you know, parents are becoming teachers now and stuff like that. A lot of the parents that we work with, the schools have been very willing to allow them to use that equipment at home to have access, so it probably just depends on the school district that you're in, but, um, or who the teacher for the deaf and hard of hearing is at the school, but I would definitely check with the schools as well. I, and Brianne mentioned that, and I think that's a good point. Thank you, Shanna. Um, it looks like we're just about wrapping up. Um, before you guys head out, um, please, if you have, um, um, well, Arizona's chapter of AG Bell is hoping to um, plan upcoming events. Before you leave, um, please let us know in the chat what kind of events you're interested in attending, um, either now or later, um, during or not during um, COVID-19. Um, otherwise, thank you everyone for coming in. Um, we've had such a great time um, sharing everything with you and we hope you got a lot out of this um, panel. Um, Erica, do you have any last words you'd like to share? Erica, if you're talking, I think you're, mu you're, you're muted. Stephanie, while we were waiting to see if she um, is able to unmute, I also wanted to mention that if an FM system or a Roger system is not possible due to cost, there are always the um, com pilot and the streamer mics, depending on whether or not you have Phonak or Oticon. And I'm going to hold up um, uh, to my camera here. I don't know if you can see. This is a com pilot and will connect to most of the newer Phonak hearing aids and it Bluetooth streams directly from the computer um, to the hearing aids. And these are fairly inexpensive compared to a Roger system. Um, this is Oticon's connect, uh, connect clip that will connect to the open series. So these are, you know, a hundred to a couple hundred dollars versus Roger systems that can be upward of $3,000. Thank you. Because you're on the phone, though, we can't actually see your screen. Do you, would you be able to um, um, copy those links into the chat so everybody can, can take a look at them? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. OK, then um, that is, I believe, all we have tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining in and taking part and sharing if you shared. Um, we were so excited to get everybody here together in this forum. 
Um, please take a look at the chat if you can. There's been lots of information that's shared. We will have the um, texts saved and we'll be able to get those out to people if you'd like them. We also will have a recording. If you would like those, please email me or Erica Lucci and we can get you um, that information. Um, thanks again, everyone. Um, it was great to see you. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Cam. It was great Good seeing you. you. That was cute. <laughs>Thank you guys. You guys did a great job. Appreciate it. Thanks for thank joining, Heidi. Yes, thank you, Heidi, and for all that you do for our community. We you guys as well. We it. It's good to see. You guys take care. You Bye, too. Heidi, thank you.